Hi folks, and welcome to a playthrough or let's play of the Witcher the Adventure game. This is the latest project from CD Projekt Red, uh, who developed the Witcher games on PC and consoles. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's also been developed by Ignacy Trevacek, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, who is a Polish uh, board game designer famous for games uh, from the Portal Games Company. Um, it has quite an extensive back catalogue. So, <coughs> let's get straight in there. So I'm going to do an offline game, so I'm not going to play against a real human, but I am going to play against the computer. I've got four players to choose from. Um, I'm going to set the dwarf and... Um, Tris Gold, which is the uh, the wizard, as uh, non, um, and I'm going to pick the Geralt of Rivia, or the Witcher. It seems to make sense if we're going to play the Witcher to actually be the Witcher, and I'm going to set Dandelion the Bard as a computer player. Now I'm just going to do a quick run through here, so I'm not going to do an extensive game. So we're going to set the quest goal to one, which generally means you get about it says 10 to 20 minutes, and I think about 20 minutes is about right. So. We are all good to go, so let's start. So here is a map of the world, um, and we're starting off straight with Geralt. Now the first thing you have to do is pick a quest. Now we've picked a one quest game, so as soon as this quest is completed, the game will finish, or until Dandelion finishes their main quest. And each quest is set into several uh, sections. The main section is the completion of the card, which is generally where the most uh, victory points are held, and they usually require going, collecting a number of coloured cards, and heading to the correct location. And then there's a test, which you, if you pass, you get uh, an extra reward. Um, there's then a, a couple of side quests, which are ways of getting extra victory points. Um, and then there's also a support quest. Now you cannot complete the support quest on your card. You can only support, complete support quests on other players' cards and you have to be in the same location as them. So I find these quite rare and they're about the same amount of victory points as a side quest. So they don't come up massively often. So let's have a look at the two quests we've got. Both of them require two red cards. Both of them uh, involve going to a place. But let's have a look at the second, the side quests, see which is more important. Um, so the Partisan's quest is simply go to somewhere and then spend red um, leads. These are investigation, I believe. Um, whereas side quest for going rogue requires four purple, which is a little bit more. So I'm going to go for the slightly easier one. Um, however, the other one is worth more victory points. No, let's go for the estimated Partisan's. It seems a bit easier. Now, each character in the game has different quests available. So everyone has a slightly different flavour of quest, which generally requires uh, different investigation um, colours and different colours of main cards. But they all are generally similar. So let's pick Decimated Partisans. Okay, so we started in Kair Morhen. Um, the interesting thing about this game is you don't actually start with any special abilities. You have to use an action to gain them. So every turn you have two actions to choose from which are in this bottom corner of the screen. So it's always worth having some skills and items so the first thing I'm going to do is a develop action which allows me to pick some develop cards. So I've got two potions to choose from and um, one of them I may spend a potion to prevent all damage I have to do it before the battle begins or I must spend a card to reroll any number of battle dice during the combat. Ooh, I think battle dice. Rerolling dice is always good. Now those cards are currently useless because they're potions, and I need to brew potions in order to use them. Now, which is the little token which appears on the bottom. So I can either move or I can brew. I actually think I'm going to start moving. So we'll do a travel. I'll move to Ard Karai. Sorry, I am pronouncing these with a bit of a Welsh slant because I am in fact Welsh so I tend to read all these things as Welsh place names. Okay so I get to this place and as soon as you get to a place with a little magnifying glass symbol you can pick one of them so I need lots of red that's what my quests are so let's collect a red and that's the end of my turn because I've used my two actions. Now um, when you come to the end of the turn you have to resolve the end of the turn which is usually you have to fight a monster or have a foul effect card, and what you can see is um, this region here, the blue area, is where I am. So there's three cities in this region, and if there's a foul effect or a monster, 
you'll see a symbol there for that effect. Now we can see there's a greyed out like wolf, which is the symbol of the witches. Um, that's greyed out at the moment, which means there are no monsters, which means I don't have to fight anything this turn. Oh no, I do. Oh, okay, I read that completely wrong. I have to fight a Necker. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, well I am Geralt. Geralt is the fighter of the characters. He's the strongest in combat, so hopefully this means I'll be able to kick his ass. So, each um, monster has two stats, a sword and a shield. Sometimes the sword is replaced by uh, the Eye of Magic, if you've got to fight them with magic. You've got two things you've got to pass. You've got to pass the sword and or the shield. Generally, if you pass the sword, you kill it, but if you fail the shield, you take some negative effect. So we roll our dice. And each character's dice are different as well. There's some generic white dice and then a set of different coloured dice for um, the different special abilities. So, I have... Now, I can't use my potion because I forgot to brew it. So all I can do is just drag these in. And I have no shield, so um, I'm, not... I'm going to take some damage. Yep, I've received a wound. Okay. Let's place the wound token on for each wound received. So what happens now is I have to choose one of my abilities to put the wound on. So I have to pick something where I can't use that ability once I have a wound. So since I've already got a develop card, I'm going to put it on the develop. Because I don't think I'm going to use that for a couple of turns. Okay, so everything's done, so now we end the turn. And now we're going over to the computer. So this is the computer player um, taking dandelions turns. So they pick their quest and they're going to move around. And when you play the computer, it does whiz along at a good pace. So you don't have to sit around for too long. Um, so now dandelion is fighting a drowner. Oh, he succeeded. Now, dandelion isn't very good in combat generally, so uh, generally he loses. But oh, we got victory points for that. That's annoying. Okay, so... <clears throat> Where do I need to go? I need to go to Mahakam, which is right the way over there at the bottom, so I should probably head in that direction. So let's do a travel. Uh, shall I do a fast travel? I'm going to do a fast travel. Fast travel allows you to move two spaces rather than one, but has the effect that you're going to take a foul effect card. Um, so we're going to do that and take the risk. So we're going to head south. So I'm going to head to Vengerberg. Which does warn me that I'm going to have to face. There is a foul effect in the region and foul fates card. Sorry, not foul effect. Oh, lose two victory points, and every other player must lose one victory point or suffer a foul effect. Oh, okay. Does that put me in negative? No, it doesn't put me in negative. That's the best place that could have happened. Okay, so while I'm here, I'm also got the options. I'm going to brew actually because I did. I um. This allows me to put a token on each of my development cards, so that means I will actually be able to use my potion ability on the next turn. Okay, so, resolve. So I'm going to have another foul fate. You may spend up to three from any of your development cards without resolving the effects for each you do not suffer. Oh, right, okay, so that's that's quite a bad card, that is. I'm going to suffer several foul effects. That's two, so I've lost one, so that brewing was a, almost a waste of time. Now what this does is this adds a foul token onto my abilities, and this means that when I win and use that ability, I have to draw another foul fate card. Basically, it's a big kick in the nuts. Um, I'm going to put it on the fast travel, and I'm going to put it on the developer, because I can't actually use the developer at the moment anyway, because I'm wounded. So let's stick it there and see what happens. Okay, we've now finished. Back to Dandelion. Now all the characters in here have different um, abilities, um, and they mostly come in the development and um, the way in which they boost those developments. So Dandelion, for instance, sings, and most of his development, which gives him gold, and most of his cards, special abilities, require gold to be used. Um, Triss uses magic um, in a similar way. The dwarf actually is quite intriguing, as his ability is to basically pull in all his dwarf friends and they've got a variety of uh, effects that can, t that can happen every turn. So, I um, I still want to get to Mahakam or Mahakam, I don't know, I'm butchering all these names, I do apologise. So let's do some normal travel to Rivia. The region is clear, which is nice. 
which means I get a red, which is nice as well. So we're going to do an investigation. Now this is how I get the red cards, which is what I need to uh, complete the game or complete my main quest. So we'll do an investigation and we will pick a red card because that is what we want. Okay, so an evening with Regis. Defeat a bronze monster. Reward receive one victory point and one red investigation. Or one red lead, sorry. I keep calling them investigation. I've been trying not to call them clues because I'm so used to Arkham Horror. In fact, this this game does have a a lot of Arkham Horror to it. Oh, I didn't have to defeat it. Well, I don't know what happened there then. I would say that's one of the small problems of this game. Sometimes things happen and you don't seem to have a clue as to why it's happened. It just does sometimes and you're not entirely sure what's gone on. Which is the same which happened with that foul fate card then. I um, was convinced I had to fight a monster and I didn't. Right, so let's travel to Mahakam. Oh dear, there's a foul fate and a bronze monster in this region. It's quite getting quite busy there then. Yay, side quest completed. Okay, so as you can see, my uh, secure aid for the allies has gained me three victory points, so we're good. I can also spend three red... Uh, can I tick that? Yes, I've actually completed two side quests. That was quick. Um, which was spending my three red leads in order to um, prepare for trouble on the trip. Which is good. So what we need now is to resolve our red cards, which is our investigation cards, which is this one here. Oh, my task is defeat a bronze monster. Sorry, I completely misread that. So yes, I have to defeat a bronze monster before I can move on. So, there is a bronze monster in my area. I am going to brew. Because if I brew, I'll have some potions ready for when I fight this monster in my area. So... One brown monster, I can either draw a foul fate or fight the monster. Well, I have to fight a monster, that's my job. It's a ghoul. Okay, so I've got to make sure I get lots of swords here. There's no shields needed. So, at the start of the battle, you may spend one token from this card to reroll any number of dice. So, yes, let's do that. And let's roll the dice. So, I'm looking for three swords on the dice. And I have two. Well, that's a good job. I um, use that ability then. So let's roll these extra dice. And it's still not enough. Oh dear. Okay, so I've only managed to get two. Now these, um, the symbols are on the red dice are the, um, the witch's magic. If I'd had the right um, skill card... I may have been able to use them to boost the combat as well, but obviously I don't. So we failed this. As it says, no more possibilities. So I flip one wound side onto its heavily wounded side, so now I'm heavily wounded. I think I might be resting next turn, you know. End. Okay, so back to Dandelion. Now Dandelion's already got one of his side quests. Um, however, he doesn't have a lot of his purple cards, so at this rate, I should get there before him. Oh dear, Dandelion's ill. Quite a dodgy meal in that pub. Oh, he's getting all the bad luck of Siren. That's quite nasty. <laughs> Four swords. I mean, you see how I struggled to get three swords before. Yeah, he's failed. Oh no. Yeah, he failed. You see how I struggled to get three swords before? Well, um, he was struggling there to get... Right, so I, need, I still need some four red leads here, so I need to head towards the red. Which means I need to go to either Sintra or Duen Canal. Let's head towards Sintra. So let's do a normal travel action to Wizima. Over there, so we need a lead from there. We don't need any of them to be fair, but I'm gonna grab a purple. Um, then I'm gonna rest because I'm heavily wounded, so that's one of my actions is wasted resting, which means I'm now no longer wounded. However, I do still have a lot of the foul fate cards on. Now, if there's no monsters or foul fate cards in the region, what happens is it brings up that war track which cycles round clockwise and then adds into your region whatever it ends up on. 
Um, so I think that one was a foul fake card, so a foul fake card has been added. So Dandelion's on four victory points, I'm currently on seven. Oh, no, he's just completed another side quest, so Dandelion's on seven and I'm on seven. And we're back to me. Okay, we need some red cards. I still need to defeat a bronze monster, and I still need to pick another red card, so... Where do I want to go? I could still do with some red leads, so I am I'm gonna risk it. I risk a fast travel to doing canal. Which means I'm gonna get three foul fate cards now. One because I had one on my fast travel. One because my fast travel always produces a foul fate, and the third one because there's a foul fate in the region. So this could end up this could all go very long, wrong very quickly. So what have we got? Bad luck. Next time you roll a battle dice, do not roll one of your hero dice. Oh, great. Just what I needed. War at your doorstep. Advance the war track. Which advances to another foul fate. And so a neighbouring region gets a foul... I, uh, this, I do have a problem actually with this. It's very difficult to distinguish which regions are which. It's obvious the snowy one and the earthy one. But... I'm not quite sure is the dark green and the lighter green a different region? I assume so, but I'm, it's it's not straightforward working out where the boundaries are between them. I mean, it's a beautiful artwork, it looks an amazing board, but it's just not quite... I can't quite work out what's going on. Okay, so we're going to do another investigation, because we need another red card. So, let's go for that there. Zoltan's anecdotes receive one lead and one red lead okay so let's choose another red lead because I only need red leads at the moment now if I had several side quests or if I wanted to get support quest which we should probably have a look see what dandelion support quest is spend three gold okay so I'd have to get to dandelion and spend three gold I've got four gold where is dandelion it's all the way over there it's I've got to be fair since I'm only playing one quest, it seems a bit of a waste of time trying to get to Dandelion and spending that gold. I might as well just aim for my main quest now and hope I get it before Dandelion because at the moment we're neck and neck. So, yes, we're at the end of my turn, so we're resolving obstacles. Spend two gold or fight a battle. Mm, do you know what? I'm going to fight a battle just to get rid of that foul effect. Which was less dice. Yeah, next time we fight a dice, one battle or one battle dice less. So, okay, we've locked off one of the red dice. And now we're going for it. So, I don't have any potions. I might need to do some prep before we go any further because I'm losing badly. And I only have two shields. So, yes, I'm going to suffer two wounds. Yeah, it was a really good idea actually fighting this bandit, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. I received two wounds. So, I'm going to be. Place a token on. Well, I've just said I want to develop next turn and I probably want to brew, so I will put it on fast travel and I'm going to put it on investigation. And I'll probably stay here for another turn next turn. Okay, back to Dandelion. Dandelion's off to Rivia. I've just realised I've, I've just been a complete idiot, haven't I? I was saying about the regions, it's hard to decipher which regions is which. But if you look at the um, location names, each location name has a different symbol on it. So I'm currently in the blue. So Duin Canal, Brocklin are all blue. Novigard, Oxenfurt, Wismere are all the pink. So yeah, I've just been a complete idiot. So my region includes Duin Canal and Brocklin, which just has uh, doesn't have much in it at the moment. So, and they also have slightly different symbols on the card as well. If you've got colour blindness, you can see doing canal has these little triangles on them. So, I said I was going to develop, which means I'm, well, I'm going to rest first, actually. Let's rest. Okay. So, we've healed, but I am now going to develop because I want some more skills. I'm a bit short on them, and it makes more sense to do a develop before I do another brew because the brew may be able to affect multiple cards. So, let's do a develop, even though we're going to have a foul fate. 
So, the neither of these are potions, they're both witcher signs. Uh, once per battle you may spend witcher signs results to have each shield produce an additional shield, and you may produce one... Sorry, spend one witch assigned to have each sword produce an extra sword. I think I'm going to go for the extra sword because my quest is still to fight a monster. And I can defeat a monster but still get hurt. Right, foul fate. Phew! Nothing happens. Nice. So the war track advances. It plunks another foul fate card in my region, which I don't want because I want to have a fight. Um, what is his main quest is to get two purple cards and get to add Karai. Um which means he's probably we're probably neck and neck at the moment. Where is Ad Karai? It's up there, he's not far away. I have a funny feeling I'm gonna lose this. I get the distinct impression that um Dandelion's going to win. Right, I need to fight a monster to get any further, so I'm going to travel. So I'm going to travel north because I need to get to Novigrad anyway. So I might as well start heading to. Oh, it's a silver monster. I need to defeat a bronze monster. Oh, that was stupid. Oh well, never mind. Let's pick up a red lead. As you can see, I'm making some stupid decisions in this game. Shall I investigate or shall I? Oh, I'm going to brew. Let's do some brewing. Let's brew potions. So we put a potion card on there. We're going to resolve, and we're fighting a wraith, which needs magic to defeat. Which I don't have any magic. So my only hope here is to survive. And you know when that, I took that card um, to get extra shields? Yeah, that didn't work out, did it? I took the extra swords. Okay, so we're going to stick to the potion here. So, let's have a look what's going on here then. Let's just roll some dice. And we have nothing. Okay, we can re-roll two of these dice, so let's do that. Um, and yes, of course, I took the Witcher Sign ability, which would allow me to gain extra shields, and I didn't gain extra shields. So, let's roll the dice again. Two shields. Yay. There we go. So, I am not going to get wounded which is nice and and turn so dandelions heading over there advancing the war track which has another monster to his area ooh a cockatrice that's not too hard actually you might defeat that then again he is dandelion and he's a bard Yep, he managed to win there. So you get some extra gold, which is what Dandelion's really good at. Okay, so I'm not going to defeat a bronze monster at this rate, so I am going to go some, some, for some investigation and see if we can get another red card. Um, receive one red for each monster in your region, then place one bronze, one silver, or one gold in your region. Okay. Well, let's do the bronze, because we need to fight the bronze. So let's put a bronze in my region, because that will help us fight it. Um, and that's the end of my turn for some reason. Okay, why have I not got another action? That's been annoying. So, I'm going to fight a bear, and the bear is quite hard. Okay. We need witcher signs. We need witcher signs. And we're not going to do this. This isn't going to happen. Because I've only got two swords. So, I've actually been pitiful. Yep. I didn't even manage to defeat a bit. I can defeat monsters, cockatrice, villains of all manner, but for some reason I can't fight a bear. Right, I'm going to get put that on the fast travel because my intention now is not to move from this location. So let's end my turn. This is getting quite frustrating because I thought I would have managed to beat this, and I think 
Oh, he's, is he one card away from the main quest? He is. I think I'm going to lose this game. Okay, failed the attack, so he didn't defeat the Nilf Guardian. The War Track advances. And he has to fight the Nilf Guardian again. Which is okay, keeps getting the shield success, which basically means he's not being killed. Oh, play the concert of cards drawn by others. Choose one in your region to fight in battle. Well, let's fight this bear again then. And uh Let's hope I can do it this turn. That looks a bit more promising. Okay. So I have got. And I'm not going to use my special ability because I don't need any extra swords. So there's no point. But it wouldn't make any difference either way. So I've managed to kill it, but it's going to wound me. So I've got my task. I've uh, defeated one bronze monster. I receive one victory point and one red lead. Which means I can remove a wound, but then I gain a wound. So again, I'm going to put the wound on the fast travel because I've got no intention of doing fast traveling at the moment. I've got two actions left, and that was my only red card. So I need to kind of start spamming the red cards now. So roll your hero dice up to three times. Each time you obtain a success, receive one red lead. If you do not obtain at least one success, suffer two wound. Oh, okay. That's what it mean. Okay, so I have a success. It's one. Uh, that's a non. Okay, so this is the third time, so it looks like I'm receiving one wound and one success. That's two successes. Excellent. So now I've completed my second red card. As you can see, my quest is highlighted in gold. So we can hand this in now and let's do that to win the game main cast quest completed excellent so now I have um, an action on there so I roll three battle dice and to be fair this is, uh, since I played a one quest game this isn't going to have an effect but normally you'd be playing more quests and there is a, a good and bad outcome and it would affect the rest of the game but as you can see I can't do any of this but I don't care because I've just finished the game set with, set up Oh, and you also draw these good fortune cards. These don't come out very often, uh, but when they do, they give you some kind of bonus. So, um, this is a, a Dwarven Colleague, and you may play this card to place one token on each of your development cards. You also spend one gold to place one additional, so that's um, useful if you're running out of potions. I can imagine later in the game, you will end up with a lot more potions to brew. So, goal completed. So, Dandelion now has another turn. On and unless he completes his quest, basically it just gives him an opportunity to complete his quest. But since he has to be an Ard Karai and he isn't, I don't think this is going to happen. So he's going to fight a phantom, which requires magic. Which um, Geralt would really struggle fighting just one. He's going to get a success. Oh, he's on eight. The game has ended. Excellent. So then we're going to get a tally up of our scores. Yep, I'm on 16 victory points and complete one main quest. And Dandelion is on 8 victory points. Um, that was just a basic run through of the game. Um, as you can see, it showed you a good idea of how the game works. This is the iOS version um, I've been streaming. It's also available on Steam. It's about £4 on iOS and I think £7 on Steam. So not too bad priced. Um, this, of course, is a direct translation of the physical board game, which I think, I can't be certain, but be probably read in the, in the price region of about £40, pounds, um, which is being distributed in most countries by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, I don't have the board game yet. I would, after playing this, I must admit, I would actually like to give the, the full board game a go with some real people. Um, unfortunately I don't have it yet let's see what uh, Father Christmas brings over the next few weeks because as I'm recording this it's a couple of weeks before Christmas I do have a couple of minor concerns with the game I've only been playing one quest and playing this on the iPad means it does um, whip around quite quick I can imagine in a physical game it's a little bit slower 
Um, we've just been recording for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. So it gives you an idea of how long a single player game is. It says 20 minutes. I mean, I've been talking through a lot of the things I've been doing, trying to explain the options I've been taking. So it could end up being quite a long game if you played a full game. I have a slight concern in that after playing two or three games of the computer version, I'm worried I've seen everything. Um, I'm starting to see a lot of the cards come up again already. Um, like, for instance, the monsters aren't a surprise. So um, I'm a bit concerned that maybe the full game hasn't got enough variety. Now, you do have variety in the characters. As I said earlier, each character has different quests, which are just different flavours. You have to different, collect different colours, which means you have to go to different areas of the boards. But they also have different skills, and their skills work in slightly different ways. Um, so if you're looking at just playing it once with each of the four characters, you're looking at getting at least four games out of it which for some people is probably enough to justify a purchase. I do enjoy it. It's got a very Arkham Horror feel, feel to it, which I quite like. Um, moving around the board, collecting the leads or clues or whatever you want to call them. I think they're actually officially called leads here. Uh, it definitely has that Arkham Horror vibe to it. Um, yeah, and I, I think that covers... I think it just gives a good idea. It's a very straightforward pick up and deliver it doesn't really do anything new but it's it's quite interesting and if you're a fan of the witcher franchise whether it's the books or the video games or the comics then i think there's probably something here for you because it does have um, a lot of references to those stories thank you very much for watching this has been polyhedron collider this has been our first playthrough um if you like this or have any comments please leave some comments below either on the main website or on youtube i'd like to know what you think um, give me any, any feedback on the format on what we've done. Hopefully we can do some more in the future. If you want any more great tabletop gaming news, reviews and some interviews with people in the industry, don't forget to go to www.polyhedroncollider.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.